Now, there are two places that you can get to this. This is the analysis design constraint is one of them. But notice that this one is missing the bottom part where we specify which are the items to select. So this is kind of good to set a general direction, but I actually like to use the alternative. So instead you go to analysis alternatives and you find the design alternative, which is the same screen as what I showed you here for the design constraints. But here you can specify, okay, design only this one and only the stop invert. So it's easier to to see everything in one spot. This is what I like about this one. So I kind of disregard the, the design constraints over there because you can uh, set them here and be very specific. All right. So this is the gravity pipe. We talked about velocity, cover, and slope. Um, the one thing that might not be in these uh, instructions for the workshop is uh, this consider cover along the pipe length. And what we have here is, remember yesterday we brought in terrain models. And if we do consider cover along the pipe length, then it's not only going to look at the cover at the start and at the end of a pipe. It's also going to make sure that anywhere along that pipe, that cover is met. All right, so that's what that means. And here, like I said, you can make it just minimum and maximum, or you can make a table, uh, which makes it dependent on the diameter of the pipe. All right. And what happens when you run that tool is that the software generates a new physical alternative. So I mentioned yesterday that you guys are going to be doing, um, where did this go? Um, that part of getting good at making scenarios is learning what gets stored in what alternative. So if you click on any alternative, you can see what kind of data is stored there. So I'm double clicking on the physical alternative just to show you what information is stored there. So we're asking it to modify invert elevations, right? So notice that for my conduits, my pipes, I have all that information stored here. So um, what catalog is, uh, what catalog class it is. So we say circular concrete 12 inch. All the physical properties are stored here. Manning's coefficient. Uh, if we're doing design, is there a user defined length? All that physical information is stored here. Now, when we're asking Stormcat to redesign our system, it's going to modify this, right? It's going to pick perhaps a different diameter, uh, etc. So when you run the design, it will always say, hey, do you want me to create a separate physical alternative, alternative or simply overwrite the values that are in this physical alternative? And I recommend to always create a new one because that way you can compare, right? So my starting point and then compare it with a different one. Uh, for the catch basins, um, something very similar. So what kind of inlet we have. And very important, the invert elevation. This is what it's going to be modifying in your design. Okay. So uh, when you run that, you need to first make sure that you specify all your design constraints, which elements you want to be designing make sure that the catalog is there. So we go to um, view um, or components. I always get lost. Catalog. So here's your conduit catalog. Uh, in this case, I have pipes, concrete pipes from 8 inch to 120 inch. And at this moment, if I were to run it, they were all available for design. So it could pick any of those uh, diameters. And you could individually uncheck the ones that you're not interested in considering um, if you want to do that. And the other catalog that you need to do is the inlet catalog. Now notice that if I create a new 
inlet. It, ha it has the type of inlet. So is this a um, curb inlet, a ditch, grade, slot? Uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about inlets in the next presentation today. So I just want to show you a little bit of that information. I'm going to import one from the library. As I mentioned, we have some inlet libraries. Um, Virginia, Connecticut, Florida. So let's pick the Florida inlets. So you get to see what kind of combination inlets we have, curb inlets, ditch inlets, grade, D1, D1. So when I make all my possible inlets part of the inlet catalog, when it's going through the design, it will look at all these possible inlet combinations, okay? So a combination means combination curb and grate. But if it's just a ditch, it will have the width, the length, and the grade type. Okay, so you can see what the defaults are here. Again, you can modify this and create your own inlet catalog. Um, I forgot to mention the one thing that uh, the last thing that you do when you're going to run a design is you go over here and you change the calculation type from analysis, which is the default, to design. So if you if you make all the changes here in the design constraints and set the catalogs right and click go, if you haven't done the design, it's simply going to run it as an analysis and not going to do it. So it will only do the design um, when you switch here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.